Hello and welcome back to our renovation adventure in central Portugal. Autumn's approaching fast and while the afternoons are still very warm, the early mornings are now misty and cooler. This week I'm thinking ahead and working on the drainage gutter alongside the road, whilst Phil is back on plumbing as we gradually add more domestic appliances. One of which actually gets fitted and used for the first time. If you're new to the channel, I'm Jane and this is my husband Phil. Late last year, we bought an abandoned farm with 8,000 square metres of land, not far from Coimbra, the ancient university city in the middle of Portugal. It had been abandoned for decades, and this is our opportunity to bring it back to life. It'll be a long project, but we hope to preserve some of the original character we have been lucky enough to find here. If you'd like to follow our adventure, then please like this video, subscribe to the channel to see future episodes, or comment if you have any suggestions or questions. So we've got a cooler morning this morning, a bit misty. Apparently the neighbours tell us this has been consistent through a lot of the summer, which is what's given some of the moisture into the ground, I guess, to, to get the stuff growing. So. Whilst it's still cool, we're due about 26, 28 later this afternoon. So whilst it's still cool, I'll give it a, another run of one of the patches with the swimmer and uh, get the place back into, into a sense of order. First trim completed early this morning under the fire regulations to uh, get it done early and then sit back for the rest of the day. But I've done the top terrace, so everything there to the right, as you see it, of the of the driveway. Spin on down. So you see now the tiny house garden. This area is relatively clear and flat. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. And, <clears throat> and courtyard garden also, more or less. Jane's just sweeping out the debris off the flat area. But I've got my next challenge is this stuff, which is actually very, it's got very shallow roots. It's just in the cracks in the, in the concrete, but it makes, it does look a bit off. I'm getting stuck in today, back out with my trusty Anshada on the road behind the house, um, trying to start the mammoth task of clearing out the gully that runs along this behind the main house. We cleared the first bit behind the tiny house before and found that there was actually a concrete sort of drain, drainage channel running down. And so we'd only done it behind the tiny house. So my challenge is to see whether we can clear the whole thing right the way along behind all of the main house so that when it starts raining again in the autumn, it doesn't start running through the house. It's going to be a little bit of a slow job, I guess and I'll just do a little bit every day or whenever I've got some spare time and hopefully eventually get to the end. Wow. <laughs> Progress is being made. 
it's actually not too bad to move it because it's mainly tiles and leaf mold. No, there's a layer of leaf mold on the top which I can just brush off, and then underneath it, it's the uh, tiles that have fallen off the walls here mainly with a bit of soil in between. So I'm gradually sorting it into leaf mold piles and uh, bits of piles, and anything that's vaguely whole is getting put back on the top of the wall. So that's what I'm up to so far. Yeah. Gentle stages, <laughs> I think. So next step in the civilization process is hot water. So this is a gas powered boiler. We went for this one because it's got a decent flow rate, um, 11 litres a minute, and it is battery initiated. So it doesn't need a, a, a electric power supply. The, it, it comes off a battery and sparks the flame. So it's relatively self-contained, should be quite simple self-install. Um, let's have a go. Yeah, so it looks like <clears throat> cold in, agua fria, salida agua caliente, hot water out, gas in. Yeah, very nice. So, after a long time taking a look at the instructions, which it's a Spanish brand and uh, let's just say they weren't that easy to follow. I got our local plumber out and he mounted it for me. So he's got it all set with the gas supplied. All I've got to do now is fit the uh, hot and cold feeds. So there's the two flexi hoses there. Connect those up to the hot and cold feeds, plug in the gas bottle and we've got a vent out through the top of the roof, or through the top of the wall, sorry. And that's all in place with a bit of help from our friendly local plumber, which is probably the best idea anyway.
Watch it through the door. Put it tight. So we're gonna make it. Hang on, the house will go side down. Yeah, I know. Okay, that's good. That's good. Now, missing the front. Okay, good. Now, this in. This one can go to the lower. Now. So there. To there. To there. That's close enough. That's right. That's fine. I can judge the maneuver behind, yeah. So how's that for a location? Yeah, well it's good because you can... I mean, the, the step up isn't going to be there permanently. You can still get it no. to see the Bluetti. Well, what we can possibly do is spin the Bluetti to be that way. Yeah, that would be more efficient, yeah. So if I can build a little table... So if I build a little table, you can put your washing basket underneath it, for example. Mm-hmm. So I can have the Bluetti further up. You're going to have the Bluetti higher, okay. Well, I think so, because then you can well, you see... Just build the shelf above the Bluetti. No, because well, you want to put the things on the top sometimes. My thing, I'd, I'd, <clears throat> I'd like it to be about another half a metre up, so yeah. that you are looking straight at the plugs when you're, when you're putting yeah. your USBs and stuff in. Yeah, yeah, good idea. So I'd like to bring it up to sort of about this height. Mm -hmm. So a robust... It's not a good idea to sit it on the washing machine? Not on the washing machine, because the washing machine's going to... Yeah, I just want to keep it stable, I know that. No, no, the washing machine's... When, when the washing machine no, no. spins, okay. it's going to go there. Okay. I, I wouldn't do... I Personally, I wouldn't do that. No, no, it was just a random <laughs> thought. But, yeah, if we spin that round... First time out for these since we've been back, and three bars. So the batteries have kept their charges brilliantly. That's two fives and a three, all in good shape. Lovely.
Okay, there we go. So that's cold water supply into the water heater. Cold water up to the washing machine. Put that on there as well. I'll drop a couple of clips in to hold those in. Next then afterwards will be hot water out from the heater and then we'll be all set up and ready to roll. Mentors to you, but it certainly is to me. The first load of washing in the washing machine has finished cleaning. Yay! Who knew it was possible to get so excited about a domestic chore? With so much having grown whilst we've been away, there's a couple of things have come through which I'm absolutely fascinated by. We've seen rows, short rows, of grapevines emerging from the ground and they tend to be between trees, they tend to be across the, the contour line, so they'll go along the slope of the hill rather than up and down it, but there is, and you can see here, there's a line of young grapevines and they go in a row over towards that orange tree. And if I'm careful not to tread on them as I walk through, and you might have seen in, in earlier posts, I mentioned all about the wire. And I think I'm beginning to put the pieces of the jigsaw together now because if you see in this tree there are scars, little cuts in the uh, in the bark which is where that wire would have been wrapped around the tree and would have held up as a string between the two trees as a support mechanism for a row of a row of grapevines and you can see them there from about from about here all the way along over to the tree over there. And if we are careful cutting around them and clearing around them, I think I'd love to see if we can encourage them to grow and see what we can do with them. 